for some of us, it's anger. And we carry this well of anger. And when something goes wrong, we dip into that well of anger. Some of us have been rejected as kids, and whenever somebody seems a little bit cold or put off, we personally experience it as rejection. Some of us have grown up around violence, and so whenever anybody's angry, we go into fear mode. Or we go into rejection mode. Or we go into, you know, I'm going to disengage and get distant mode. It's called withdrawal. Are you with me? And so, so you know, we have these things that get embedded. And, and it's really natural for us, based on past pains, to go into patterns that we as adults, it just doesn't work anymore. Am I losing you? No. Good. Because I wanted to make sure that serious expression was that you were thinking. Okay? And now, now this is what the Bible tells us. This is Proverbs 4. Be careful how you think. Why? Because your life is shaped by your thoughts. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. I found that when I'm really, you know, when I've chosen, and, and I want to be really clear with you guys. If your spouse does not cheat on you, but is faithful, and, you know, does what they can to pull their share, and is not like an addict or an abuser, it's really not hard to choose to be happy in your relationship. Happiness is a choice. I want to be clear on that. Happiness is a choice. Furthermore, love is a choice. It's a choice. And so, you know, it's really funny how, how we see all the work we do and we fail to see the work our spouse does. And then they take off for a few days. And when they get back, it's like, oh, I love you. <laughs> you are awesome. And I think that that's one of the values of, of just a little time apart because you don't really appreciate your spouse until you don't have them for a while. But it's, it's the same with our kids or anybody else. You know, loving is a choice. And when we choose to set our minds right, um, you can literally change the way you feel about your spouse in like 6 to 12 weeks if you will consistently make the choice. There's an exercise, I think it's Daniel plan, where, you know, you write down three things every day that you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, honestly, the first thing on the list is my wife. And she's amazing. And what's really cool is we started a bed and breakfast in April. We took over one. And I just watched. She does magic in the kitchen. And I would never say this if she was here because this would embarrass her to death. But she does magic in the kitchen. There are people taking pictures of her meals and putting it on the website. Okay? They look good and they taste good. I'm telling you, I'm a believer. <laughs> They're both. Justin, would you say an amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> yeah, he and so, yeah, Justin comes home from, from Academy in the first morning, man. He shows up at the table. <laughs> and so, so, but here's the thing is that, that, you know, it's what we choose to see. It's the same with your church. Hello? It's the same with your church. You can choose. I mean, you can choose to take an attitude. You, take, you choose to take an attitude, then nothing we do is going to be right, and <coughs> you'll find everything that's wrong. <coughs> There's all kinds of things wrong. You know, you take an attitude towards me, you can find things wrong with me. You don't have to look very hard. But the truth of the matter is, is it's a choice you make. I can find things wrong with you if I decide to set my heart that way. But I try to set my heart. I don't always succeed, but I always try to set my heart to see what's right. Just about anything in life. It can be that way about your job. It can be that way about your house or your vehicle. I mean, anything that you choose, you make a choice. It's about the way you choose to think. And that's what's important. And so when I choose to think critically of my, my church or my friends or my family or my staff, then that's what I'm going to see. But if I choose to think positively about my staff and my church and my friends and my family, then that's what I see. What are you choosing? Amen. Yeah. What are you choosing? And that really changes everything when we start to realize that, oh, I made a choice to be miserable. I'm miserable. And then we blame everybody else. But then when we start realizing, wait a minute, I'm miserable because I chose this. Doesn't that look different? So guard your heart. Guard your mind. Watch 
where your thoughts take you because that's what you will become. As a man believes in his heart, so he is. This is the greatest battle we face. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 5. He says this, and this is about spiritual warfare. How many of us believe that there's a devil out there and that, that we're in a war? Okay, so we, we're in a conflict, and we need to understand that, that we are constantly in a conflict. And this life that we live, this is number one temporary. We just did a service yesterday for Pat. This life is temporary, but the other thing is, is that this life is a trust because God is giving you this life to prepare you for eternity. And how many of you understand on the other side of eternity? This is going to look pretty short. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and so watch this. Because this is the key to that warfare. We are in a spiritual warfare. This is where the key and the most epic battle takes place. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, these weapons that we fight with have divine power, all right, to demolish strongholds. You may not know what that means, but doesn't it sound cool? <laughs> that the weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world, but they have divine power to demolish our most. I don't care who you are, or, you know, I don't know a thing about the Bible, but that sounds awesome. I mean, you know, we watch these superhero movies. Why? Because we want power. We love, we're drawn to power. We want to be more than what we are. But here's the thing is that if you're in Christ, you have weapons that demolish strongholds. I don't even have to be a mutated turtle. <laughs> right? And so when that happens, we demolish arguments and every pretension that self sets itself up against the knowledge of God. I mean, let's be honest. We have some really bizarre thoughts sometimes, don't we? Yeah. And we have to take those captive and we take captive every thought to make it what? Obedient, obedient to Christ. How do we know if a thought is obedient to Christ? But we have to understand what Christ has said, true? If we want to make it obedient to God, then we need to understand what God has said. Am I, are you with me? Yes. I mean, that's really direct logic, true? And so, man, we need to understand that. Man, the most epic battle many of us will ever face is the battle for our mind. And that's that. that and I, I give you blanks so that you can actually take some notes so that you can remember this past, like, you know, 45 minutes. Okay? <coughs> and if you actually get engaged to where you're writing, then your memory is going to go up like multitude of times. It's going to actually change exponentially. And so what I see when, you know, you don't want to engage and you basically don't think I have anything worth listening to. And it's like, why would you be here? Wouldn't it be a waste of your time? And so, so... You know, I encourage you, bring a pen and pencil and engage. And so with that, we need to understand that the devil in the world, they're seeking to win your mind. They're seeking to win your mind. I mean, how many of you watch commercials? I mean, I really don't, except for the Super Bowl, because they're like awesome during the Super Bowl. Bless your heart. Thank you. How many of you watch the commercials at the Super Bowl? Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, I got DVR, so I don't watch many commercials. But man, it's the whole time comes. There are some of the funniest things. They're better than the football ball, especially the last year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a recovering Bronco fan. All right? So, but with that, is that, that, that if you look at commercials, you kind of see how the devil works. Because how many of you notice that the people on beer, beer commercials are like gorgeous? Yeah. What? The world's most... Uh, the world's the most amazing man. Steve, that's my favorite. <laughs> right? You know, it's really funny because some people, uh, they look all spiritual at me like, I can't believe you watch that. And you know what I'm talking about because you saw it yourself. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you watch these commercials and, and it's just so funny how somebody, you know, they're so intriguing and they wrap it up with alcohol. Now, how many people have you noticed that people that have drank a, a fairly good amount of alcohol are the, like not interesting at all. You notice that? I mean, it, it's kind of funny because some of them are the happy girl. I just love you. 